today we are going to be talking about a really interesting species of reptile, the monkey-tailed skink. This lizard is known by many different names. Not only are they known as the monkey-tailed skink, but they're also referred to as the prehensile-tailed skink, the Solomon Island skink, the zebra skink, the giant skink, the Carotia zebrata, if you want to use their scientific name. I think that's all of them. I think that's all of the names. There's probably more. But they are the largest species of extant skink on planet Earth, which means they are the largest species of currently living skink on planet Earth. So this actually gets a pretty decent size, although ours are only about about 16 inches long total right now. They're kind of young. These grow to about just shy of three feet long, including their tails. Their tails, as you can see here, consist of a, or they make up of about half of their total body length. And they're called the prehensile tailed skink, the monkey tail skink, all these different names that refer to their tail because their tail is prehensile. Just like a monkey's tail or many species of monkey's tails, they use their tail to wrap around branches and get a good grip in the trees. So as you can imagine, they live up in the trees. They love to climb, as you can see. They're actually native to the Solomon Islands, which is why they get one of their names, the Solomon Island skink, and they are very unique in many ways. So we thought we'd introduce them to you since we have a few of them in our zoo here at Snake Discovery. We have a trio, we have a male and two females, and they actually are very communal. We'll get into more of that later. Being a climbing species, they are considered arboreal, and they spend the vast majority of their life, if not their entire life, up in the tree canopy in forested areas. They do take shelter in hollowed out areas of those trees and they're actually nocturnal. So they come out primarily at night and usually you can tell if a reptile is diurnal or awake during the day or nocturnal, awake at night or most active at night by looking at their eyes and typically round pupils indicate a diurnal species and elliptical shaped pupils indicate a nocturnal species. But the monkey-tailed skinks are one of those few exceptions where they have round pupils but they are primarily active at night. They're also considered crepuscular at times, which means they're active during dawn and dusk, but during the daytime, they're pretty much asleep all day. They don't move around a whole lot though, and they are herbivorous actually. So since they don't move, it's a good thing that they're herbivorous because there's no chance they'd be able to chase down prey. Instead, they eat primarily leaves. They will eat some fruits too, but it's a lot of leaves, a lot of flowers. So I like to compare them to like koalas. They don't move much and they eat leaves. Specifically, this species loves to devour pothos leaves and that's the only reason why we have them in this video sitting awkwardly behind me is because they love to eat pothos. They also like to eat ficus leaves in the wild, but in captivity, they eat pretty much any leafy green and some fruits sometimes too. Pothos, however, is a toxic species of plants to many pets we typically keep in our homes, including cats and dogs, but monkey-tailed skinks love to eat them and they're not toxic to them at all. Sexing prehensile-tailed skinks can be pretty difficult though because it's really hard to differentiate between males and females. Some theories speculate that males have blockier heads, and we've noticed that with our male, he has some hemipenal bulges near the base of his tail. Granted, that's not 100% going to guarantee you a male by the sounds of it, but the two other ones we have don't have any bulges, so we are 99% sure we have a male and two females. They also get along really well. These two have sl more slender heads, and he has a pretty blocky head, so yeah, we're, we're pretty sure we have a trio here of a male and two females. Another cool thing about these skinks is that they give birth to live young. It's debated whether they are ovoviviparous or viviparous, meaning if they develop eggs that hatch inside or if they have a placenta and there's no egg involved at all. But regardless, they give birth to live young. It's really cool. They typically have one to two babies, but there was one instance in which a female gave birth to three babies, triplets, but that's very uncommon by the sounds of it. Typically, it's just one or two babies at a time. This is actually a very good parenting species of rip, or this, or very young brute, or very, I'm so sorry, play. Charles. Yeah, cl yeah, I don't know. This is an example of a species that only has one or two babies, which is a very small amount in the reptile world, but those one or two babies, they are protective over and they parent thoroughly to make sure that those babies make it into adulthood. In comparison, a lot of other reptiles just rely on quantity over quality, where they'll have like 30 babies at once, like garter snakes, or 20 babies at once, but they're all on their own and maybe one of them will make it to adulthood. While being protected by their parents for the first year of their life before dispersing off into other family groups, the babies will actually eat their parents' poop.
poop in order to acquire the gut flora in order to digest their food properly. The parents' fecal matter actually has some great bacteria in it that those babies are able to utilize. I personally don't know of any other species of reptile that does this, which is just another reason why the monkey-tailed skinks are so unique. Now, like I said earlier, these three individuals are actually pretty young. I mean, as adults, they get just shy of three feet, and as babies, they hatch out at about 11 to 12 inches, which is huge for a baby, especially a baby that was born via live birth. Scientists compare it to a human giving birth to a six-year-old child. That would be so painful coming out, and I feel for the female monkey-tailed skinks. And to reiterate, they live in pretty tightly knit family groups. The babies not only stay with their parents, but they're also protected by other adults in their family group, and they form very strong relationships with one another, lifelong relationships with one another. Because of this, in captivity, it's definitely recommended to keep at least two, preferably three or more together, since they are so social. And these three seem to be pretty tightly bonded uh, from what we've been able to observe. There's always like two next to each other and one apart and then they switch it up and the other two are next to each other and the other one's out. Anyway, they get along really, really well, but sometimes they don't. So you definitely have to introduce them carefully to make sure they are going to get along. Granted, I think it did help us that we had a male and two females versus if we had two males and a female. Then the males might butt heads and might get, not get along so well. In the pet world, sometimes keepers will actually get a baby and have it bond with them. And so the monkey tailed forms this tight bond with the human. But then when you leave it at home, they can have separation anxiety. So it's either you have to keep a monkey-tailed skink that's bonded with you on you at all times, or it's gonna get stressed out, or you have to keep them in family units in an enclosure together. This is why they can actually get depressed and stressed and die from being taken from the wild because they are separated from their family units and they just can't readjust to a new one. Fun fact, a group or a family of monkey-tailed skinks is actually called a circulus. And in the wild, if a member from another circulus gets too close, they're actually very defensive and they may even attack that intruder. They are very reliant or very loyal to their own circulus. And actually, we are not part of their uh, family group. These three have formed their own circulus in our zoo, by the looks of it, and when we go in to try to pick them up, they are pretty defensive, actually. They do not want to welcome us into their family group. But once we take them out and we handle them for a little bit, like almost all other reptiles, they do calm down and they're much more handleable. Here at Snake Discovery, we're definitely enjoying this species living in our zoo. However, we don't see them that often, to be completely honest, since they are nocturnal. During the daytime when our zoo is open, they hide pretty much all the time. You can usually see a tail or a back leg or maybe a nose poking out through some foliage, but they definitely come out near the end of the day, right before we close. So if you're lucky, you might be able to see part of a monkey tailed skink in our zoo. Maybe a full body if you're extremely lucky and come late enough at night, but it's still a lot of fun kind of playing that I spy game of, oh, where are they? So I like to challenge kids that come into our zoo to try to find all three of them. And usually it's, oh, there's one's tail. Oh, there's another one's foot. Oh, there's another one's back foot. That's, that's how you find them in our zoo. We house ours in a six by three by seven foot enclosure to make sure they have plenty of room when they reach an adult size. And we have it filled with vines and branches to try to imitate the upper canopy of a rainforest, like where they would live in the wild. We tried putting pothos in, and they ate this one, which was nice and full, like the one yeah, on the like other side. It was double that one. It looked like that, and in two days, these three ate it down to the soil, like the stems and all. There were just little stems, stem bits poking up from the soil, and so we've had to nurse this poor pothos back to life in the back, and I think we're just gonna give them pieces of pothos at a time. I think the only way we'd be able to keep a pothos permanently in their enclosure is if the pothos was big enough to not be entirely devoured by them, and it could keep up with growing new shoots and new leaves at a quicker rate than what they can eat. So if anybody knows of a huge pothos plant that we could put in our monkey-tailed skink exhibit, we'd love to buy it. <laughs> we can't find big ones anywhere. Originally, we fed our monkey-tailed skinks in the morning a nice big salad. Then when we noticed their eating habits were more guided towards the evening, which makes sense since they're nocturnal, I was thinking maybe since they're crepuscular, they might eat something in the morning, but they definitely do not. They, for us anyway, only eat overnight, which could be because of their shy personalities. They don't feel 
feel comfortable enough to come out until everybody's gone for the evening. But we do leave the salad out overnight and it seems like it's just cleared by the morning when we come back. As you can see, they love climbing everywhere, including on my head. Very fun species to have, even though they can sometimes be defensive if they are not familiar with you. And we're really, really hoping that they have babies one day. I think that would be really cool to see a little 11 inch long baby monkey tailed skink. It'd also be cool to document it. Yeah, it would. I don't know. It looked like they were um, maybe doing stuff a few days ago, but they was all behind foliage, so I couldn't really tell for sure. But we would love to see babies. Unfortunately, it's a six to eight month gestation period, which is a very long wait in order to get babies. And because of that, and their small brood size, they're not very readily available. Thankfully, there are some amazing breeders of monkey-tailed skinks in the United States. Unfortunately, though, they're few and far between because of how difficult and how long of a wait there is to breed these. And so their price does reflect that. Typically, a captive-bred monkey-tailed skink will be around $800 in the, in the U.S., whereas a wild-caught one, since they are still imported, as far as I'm aware, is closer to about $400. However, I'd strongly advise against a wild-caught animal because that is definitely not a sustainable way to have them in the pet trade as far as their population in the wild goes. The only reason to pursue a wild-caught individual is if it's a rescued wild-caught animal or if you're looking for a new bloodline to introduce to a captive breeding population. Unfortunately, the pet trade along with logging and therefore deforestation and hunting for meat have all been terrible threats on their population in the Solomon Islands. These guys are considered a nearly threatened species on the IUCN red list and their populations are rapidly declining. By the way, if you ever want to check out a species' current conservation status, like if they're threatened, if they're endangered, if they're critically endangered and so on, just go to IUCNredlist.org. They're not a sponsor of this at all, but I was introduced to this website when I was in college and I use it all the time when I'm checking an animal's current conservation status. It's actually really interesting information to know how these populations are either in Declining or usually declining in the wild. And, and they generally say the last time a study was done. Yes, and it's based off the most recent studies. Many, actually, species of reptiles have not been evaluated, so you'll see that a lot too when looking at reptiles. But you can look up the status of mammals and birds, not just reptiles online. Really, any animal, if you're interested in their conservation status, just go to IUCNredlist.org. We use it all the time. Now, with the monkey-tailed skinks, unfortunately, as far as I can tell, and I've tried searching for quite a while, there is not a single conservation group trying to protect the species in the wild in the Solomon Islands. So it kind of surprises me with how their populations are really declining. If anybody wants a cool project or wants to work on something to help a wild population, these animals need our help for sure. So this would be a great candidate of a new species to help conserving in the wild and protecting their remaining land. And if anybody does know of a conservation group working with monkey-tailed skinks and repopulating the wild populations, please let us know and I will add it to the description below. I was actually trying to find an organization to help promote in this video and try to encourage that if you want to help protect the species, you can donate to this organization. But I couldn't find one for the monkey-tailed skinks. So if anybody knows of one, please let me know and I'll put it in the description below. So that is just a quick introduction to the monkey-tailed skink or prehensile-tailed skink or zebra skink or giant skink or Carusia zebrata. I didn't have a cheat sheet for that. No, because I thought I might forget it. Anyway, monkey tail skinks are really fascinating, so I hope you learned something new today on the world's largest species of skink. Thank you everybody for watching. Thank you as always to our Patreon backers for your very generous support, and we'll see you next time.